Hello everyone and welcome to another video from the Demon Overlord. And as you can see by the turntable, we're going to be doing another review of some miniatures that I have an order from Miniature Market. Uh, these will be miniatures from the Ice Maiden set that was recently out, and a couple from the newer unpainted set that some of them I painted up and some I haven't. So, let's get started, shall we? And first up here we have the Snowy Owl Bear. And for a reference or scale comparison, we actually have the Owl Bear from Elemental Evils, which I think is based more on a black bear design. And then we have Beaky here from Pathfinder's uh, Rusty Dragon Inn, which, as you can guess, he's very big and bulky. A little bit actually bigger than I think now the Snowy, but I made him more 5th edition friendly and repainted it with the red eyes and the purple fur like an actual Owl Bear would have based on lore wise. But gave it the 5th edition flair. But this owl bear, though, I really do like his design. I like how he actually does look like a polar bear, literally with some owl aspects. And I like the sort of chubby face fur he's got to make him that fluffy, puffy look. Makes him look very friendly, as these ones are supposed to be a less aggressive and more easily tameable owl bear in some regards. So let's move on to the next mini from the Ice Maiden order part. So the next two minis I decided to put together because they're kind of... Uh, in a way, similar things. These are both what happens when Mind Flayers try to place um, the tadpoles into the brains of these gnomes. You can get a failure, which creates a squidling, or you can get a success, which basically creates a miniature Mind Flayer, which, if I remember the name, he's a it's just gnome Ceramorph. So when the Ceramorph Ceramorphus actually succeeds, you basically get a tiny size Mind Flayer. And I actually do like the squidling, though. I actually, even though I know he's the failure, he's still pretty cool. I like the little squidling's uh, long tentacles, and he's actually walking on them. Pretty cool little minis. I definitely had to get them to add more to the mind flare options you get and the more awesome aberrations to throw at your parties and different out-of-the-box ideas. Next up here, we have a knucklehead trout, which, in truth, really, it's just a simple fish. And I did get one in my video for the... Frost Mate was actually in the first box. I think I got the Knucklehead. So if you want to check those out, do check those out. You can see one of the other minis I actually got that I didn't get here. Because those are the ones I actually opened. These are just ones I wanted to get because I wanted some more of these special miniatures from the set instead of buying a bunch of boosters and hoping to get them. Really cool fish. Very nice to have a nice uh, big-sized fish for your group to deal with that could knock them out with its big fat head. <laughs> Pretty cool fish. Next up, we have the Cobalt Mountaineer, which in my opinion... This would be a great miniature for any player class kobold to like be able to go into a city and not be ridiculed by people. He's fully dressed, fully decked out. He has a large little satchel on his back right there, which is good for you know the backpack that you always get as a character. And he's got a pickaxe for a weapon. Now, I see no reason why you literally couldn't just use a pickaxe as a weapon. So let's compare to some other kobolds, shall we, and see how he stacks up next to him. So here he is with some other miniatures of the Cobalt style. We have the Reaper Bones little Sorcerer Cobalt there. I also put the Vampire Cobalt. Here's another little Sorcerer based more on Pathfinder's design for Cobalts. There's an older school Bandai based Cobalt, which is, I think, the Flame Scorch. Here's a resin made one from Etsy, so a little bit more of a bulky, more aggressive look. And then you got the nice clothed winged Cobalt, which also looks just like its uh, other Monster Menagerie counterpart, which has just the no wings and a different cloth color. But as you can see, he blends in just fine with any Cobalt from any set, which makes him really useful and easy to blend together to make a nice horde of Cobalts. Okay, next up here we have a miniature known as the Black Unpainted Black Pudding from the newer Nolzier set. Um, this is the other part of my order. Now, the reason I grabbed this guy is because I was sitting there and I grabbed him because he was a slime and it was unpainted. And then I thought about it before I painted him and started right before I put that paintbrush to him. I said, what would be unique more than a black pudding? As I already happen to have two of the black pudding miniatures, which will put them up for comparison. There we go. And as you can see, they're literally the same sculpt, full heartedly the same thing. It's just now I decided what about the ochre jelly since i don't have any ochre jelly minis and they're also really hard to get your hands on people always want a ton for them if they're selling them and most people hold them because they're kind of hard to get your hands on and like actually find them for a reasonable price and to find them in stock also so i decided to basically since the ochre jelly and the black pudding have a very similar stat block i decided to just paint them an ochre color and as you can see he looks pretty cool they both have the engulfing and the pseudopods flying out so they both do the same thing, pseudopod, and they both have the ability to split. I mean, they're, I think immunities and stuff are a little different, but in the end, very similar creatures. Probably even cousins in the slime evolution, so 
really awesome. It's nice to have another type of slime on, in the inventory to represent those creatures. Now back to the okra jelly. Now the only reason I haven't solidified him with glue to the base yet is because I wanted to show one thing I thought that was a little weird. He actually has what looks to be like mounting holes on him for a base. So I think he literally was copied 100% based on the older model. They didn't even flatten this down, so I guess he was like the only one they didn't make a new base for. But really cool and awesome to have. I mean, let's put a little there. See? About to consume himself a squidling. Awesome slime and definitely great to add to my library of minis. Now, next up, we have another interesting creature that recently came out, the Bone Naga. Now, with the Bone Naga, I went really simple design as paint job, similar to the Oak Ray Jelly, which was just yellow in tone, and then a little more yellow on top as a dry brush. This is a very similar ideal. I went with a skeletal bone, strong tone, skeletal bone dry brush on top of that, so that way he wasn't, like, so dark, because that way he would look like bones. And he does. He looks like old bones that have weathered to the point where they're basically... They've been around for some time, and he's also got his nice base there. He's actually solidified, and he's got, like, a little... I took desert yellow for... And, by the way, I use Army Painter for my painting most, like, 99% of the time. And, as you can see, I gave him, like, a desert yellow with another strong tone, and it looks like a dirty ground that he's on top of, ready to rise up and strike and kill your players, and I'm not really sure to consume them or maybe just suck the magic out of them. I'm not really sure what they do to their prey, but... Pretty cool monster. Definitely nice to get a representation of Nagas since they don't really have many miniatures out there. And uh, just a cool one from the Monster Manual in general for a very interesting style of undead to throw at your players. Here we get to one of my really big time favorites of how he came out. This is my recently painted Gorgon. And I recently got done painting him with basically oak brown on his the boulder rock he stands on. And literally, this thing took about four colors to make this if you want to do this yourself, and one type of tone, and two types of tone. On his base there, I hit it with a very dark tone for the base, or the, sorry, the stone or rock that he's standing on, or dirt. And then for his body, I literally used plate metal, just pl army painters plate metal all the way, because Gorgons don't have, like, different types of metal on the way. And I could have honestly made him rough iron. Maybe if I ever buy another of these unpainted bad boys, I'll do so. Because to make a different variety of Gorgons. But the plate metal looked just so good with that nice. And then actually, I hit him with a little flesh wash. And it dulled it down just the right amount. And now he looks fantastic with those little red eyes. He's got the nice green smoke. That was just a dry brushing of some jungle green. And he came out looking fantastic. Like, that looks literally professionally done, which, simple paint job, but definitely ready to go on the board, run your players down, gore them, paralyze them, and grind them into powder for its food. Now on to the next uh, miniature, shall we? But before that, I do actually have one thing. I want to compare him to the Pathfinder's miniature, which, honestly, God, I really distaste this Pathfinder mini. I'm sorry. To anyone who's a real big fan of Pathfinder, that looks so wrong. It looks to me like the cheap Mecha Godzillas from old Godzilla, but they weren't even in like, and not in the good way. It looks in the bad way, not comparatively in a good way. Like old Mecha Godzilla was still good. This thing looks like Mecha Godzilla throat dragged the dirt, rolled around, and turned into a bull. Because I don't understand the horns. I don't understand these spikes. I don't understand this blocky look to him. It doesn't look natural. This looks like a true natural bull placed in metal, which is more what the Gorgon's akin to. Anyway, getting off topic, let's get on to the next one, though, shall we? Now, here we have another newer set. It is the Cobalt Inventor, Dragon Shield, and Sorcerer. Now, before you say that's not winged Cobalt, that's actually a, the fake sailed Cobalt, that one that has the fake wings for the uh, Sorcerer. And as you can see, we're going to get to the back. Pretty cool looking. I like the uh, Dragon Shield. The Sorcerer is pretty interesting of a new wing style. And I like the Inventor with a little skunk and scorpion stick stick kind of poking out there really nice and i do look forward to getting these bad boys done um as usual though check me out on twitter when i get these done i'll probably post pictures of them there so let's move on to the last miniature from the order now here we have the giant ape the mighty gorilla basically of huge class as you can see he's dwarfing everyone else he actually comes with a nice huge base which i cannot wait until DD starts making those for people who want to make their own minis it would be awesome to have an official huge base. But as you can see on the back here, there's his painted style. I might use it similarly, but I probably will just... Honestly, since it follows like a, just a standard gorilla paint, it might be something I follow. But like the others, I might make my own little bits of flair to it. But I do also like the new artwork they have on the back of these things. Really cool. 
And I gotta say, just a nice mini. I only grabbed this guy, honestly, because I have a giant dinosaur. It'd be cool to have it fight a giant ape to kind of do a Kong reference joke, if necessary, in a game. But in reality, just a nice miniature altogether. Let's put it back here for like the full order. So this is basically the whole order right here for Miniature Market. Do check them out. They do have miniatures. If you can't get them in your store because of the virus, it's definitely nice to be able to order them online and get them shipped to you. And then, of course, these guys, you know, the effort of painting them. See, it's not hard, not hard paint jobs, and they came out looking great. So anyway, guys, do check us out on our podcast for the Dice and Dummies, where I am right now getting ready for Season 3 with my rest of my friends. Um, and we're hoping to do live streaming of it. So, you know, definitely subscribe to us and get ready and try to hit a notification somewhere so that way when we start, you're in the know and you get to watch that right as we do it. Because we also do like to hear questions from our fans as we do it. Because we might stop during a episode recording to basically answer that question. So maybe you want to have your question answered. We'll try to give you the best answer we got. Anyway, guys, have a great one. Stay safe out there. And bye-bye.